Aloha, aloha kakayaka kako. We are continuing our more little of Kamehameha and Kohala. We are looking at how Kohala contributed to Kamehameha's greatness. And yesterday we, we visited some of the sites where he the site where he was born. We talked about his birthstones. And today we're going to be taking a trip <clears throat> through the district of Kohala recounting and summarizing some of the major events that occurred you know, during his birth. And so uh, for the next few minutes, let me give you a quick overview of what we're going to see and what we're going to do today and how all of this contributes to the mo'olelo of Kamehameha and, and Kohala. First of all, let us, let us quickly review um, Kohala. And here we are. This would be Kara High and the coastline. And this is the birth site. This is where we were at yesterday, down at Koko Iki, at Kapakai. And we are now here in the town of Havi. We are going to be going from Havi to Honomaka'u, to Kapa'au, to Halaula, to Makapala. And then we will not be able to hike uh, four to five hours to get up to Avini, which was his eventual place, his destination. But remember now that this entire journey from his birth site at Kapakai Kokoiki to Avini was to avoid being killed by High Chief Alapainui. And why was he threatened? Because of the prophecy that accompanied his birth. All of the signs, the white rainbow, the, the th thunder, the lightning, and the prophecy that his mother wanted to consume the eyes of a tiger shark. And all our prophets and seers interpret that to mean that this child would be a slayer of chiefs. He would be a great warrior statesman. And some of the ruling chief at that time were quite concerned that this might mean uh, he would be coming after them. So, so this entire journey through the district was to avoid capture and execution by Alapai Nui and his soldiers. Now, in order for this to be successful, his kahu, his caretaker, was carefully selected. He was High Chief Naeole of Kohala. And it was then his responsibility to take the child from birth to a safe place up in the highlands of Avini, and not only to keep him safe from harm, but also where he would be raised. He would be cared for, and he would be tutored as, as a youngster. It was his special, shall we say, educational center as a young child, safe, free from ever, everyone else. And so we have here now a sort of a matrix that has place names of Kohala in one column, and then the literal translation of these names, and then the relationship of these names to the Mo'olelo, the story of Kamehameha. And um, we started off yesterday by saying uh, he was born here in Koko Iki, and Koko means blood. Iki means a little bit of blood. And so it's that place where a little bit of blood from his mother was shed during the birthing process, Koko Iki. And it still has that name, Koko Iki. And then we uh, drove past an area called Ho'eha. Ho'eha. Here we are, ho'ea. It means to, uh, to create sovereignty or to arrive. People were, the whole, the whole district was part of a conspiracy, if you like, a grand conspiracy that, that Naiole put together to save the child. And ho'ea is where they were anxiously waiting for him. So when he did arrive, ho'ea, here you are, you have arrived. But it also has a double meaning. Ea means sovereignty. And for the people of Kohala, why were they so willing to dedicate themselves to this youngster is because they wanted to restore the political prominence that this district once had several generations back. This entire Kohala district was the political, social, economic, the center of power for the entire island. And it had been waning since then. The political center shifted to Hilo, it shifted to Ka'u, it shifted to Kona, and Kohala was saying, 
Yes, if that prophecy is about one of our boys who is going to be a great warrior chief and bring us prominence again, by all means, that's exactly what we want. We want that prophecy to come true. We will do everything we can to make that prophecy come true. And we will regain the prominence that Kohala so richly deserves. And that's one reason why this entire district and thousands of people were already dedicated to him from birth. And so, Hoya is where he arrived. We talked about Javi, and this is where we're at, and we want to thank the uh, Kohala Inn for allowing us to use their, their lobby here for this quick overview. We are in the lobby of the Kohala Inn, and thank you, Leinani. Uh, but um, Javi is that place where something happened. The logistics broke down. The wet nurses went there. And, you know, and Kamehameha was starving. You, you, you're talking about a newborn infant that has to be fed almost every hour, you know. And Naiole was aware of this, and he had all his wet nurses lined up. But something happened here where that didn't occur. And as he was crying, his breath, ha, had that sound of famine, V, hunger, the breath of hunger, ha, V. And Hawaiian say, V, V means you're starving, you're, you're famished, you're, you're very thin, V. Javi is that, that breath of hunger. And so to commemorate that, they named this place Javi. And my theory is this, that prior to the birth of Kamehameha, all of these places along the route may have had different names. But in the grand sense of oral tradition, the Hawaiians of Kohala changed the names in order to commemorate their contribution and what happened to Kamehameha during this journey. And so we have Havi, a place of hunger, and how they kept him alive. Then we're going to a place called Honomaka'u. Honomaka'u, and we'll talk about it a little bit, but this is where, and here we see Honomaka'u, somewhere up in here, Honomaka'u, where uh, Alapai soldiers were almost upon Naioli and his, and, and Kamehameha. And there were, Naioli and his gang were panicking. We're gonna get caught, we're gonna get killed. And Naioli says to them, Hono Makau, Hono Makau. Makau in Hawaiian means fear, to be afraid, to be really afraid, Makau. Hono is uh, like Honolulu, Hono Ipo, Hono Kea, means a sheltered area or to shelter, hono. So literally, we're talking about shelter fear. But what does that really mean in relationship to this journey is Naiole saying to his entourage, don't panic. Handle your fear. Take care. Hono makau. You know, don't panic. Be cool. We're not going to get caught. Hono makau. Shelter your fear. Grab a hold of it. Don't panic. Honomaka'u. And we're going to see that site. From Honomaka'u, we're going to a place called Kapa'au. And Kapa'au is a very interesting name because when Kamehameha was born, the, it was during the rainy season, Ikua season, and in Kohala, when it rains, it rains. And a lot of the streams are swollen, especially on the windward side. The streams get swollen very quickly. In fact, two years ago, they were so swollen at Kapa'au that they washed out the highway. And it is that same stream <laughs> that Naiole and his entourage encountered. And as they were falling the stream, Kamehameha's kapa had to be wrapped around the baby and they waded through the swollen streams and ao is the Hawaiian word for wading, swimming. When we take a bath, we say, ow, ow. We're, we're washing, we're bathing. And so, kapa ao commemorates that place where they had to wrap Kamehameha in his kapa and waded through the swollen streams. So kapa, whose kapa? Kamehameha's. What was it doing? It was wading through the swollen streams. Hence the name kapa ao. Kapa. Oh. 
And then we go on to Halaula, and maybe I'll, I'll wait till I tell you about what Halaula means. And then we're going to go to Halava and, um, and also Makapala. Those are all very interesting names, and we'll talk about them when we get there.